First, uh, I wanted to thank Chris and uh, Ansi and Dom for inviting me here. Uh, it's an honor because, uh, as you mentioned, I, I feel like I have seen many, many different years and many iterations of this. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about it. I see Tony got here, uh, one of the very early iterations. Um, and what's amazing to me is to actually see everybody here in the same room. I was talking with Chris, and this really is the first time when all of the people who care about the WebVR standard are coming together in the same room. That's exciting to me. So um, I'm going to try and make this shorter even than the time we have. I know we're actually running late. Um, but I, I wanted to frame a couple of things here. Um, I was asked to give you a couple of challenges. And uh, I wanted to kind of put you in a, a certain kind of headspace. So um, this is 1993. Uh, this is the placeholder project. It was my first VR project. Um, it was done up at the Banff Center for the Arts, uh, led by Brenda Laurel, Rachel Strickland, Michael Neymark, all who are still uh, active and doing interesting work now. Um, but if you take a look at it, it was fantastic, right? So uh, this was a virtual research glasses. Those are 640 by 480 running at 60 hertz. Um, we had tracking with the Paul Hemus Fast Track running uh, on the head, on the waist, so you could move your head and the body motion at different locations. The hands were both tracked. We had grippies, right? We were using uh, the, these sort of resistive sensors so that you could actually grab things and track the hands for their location. We had spatialized audio. So um, we were using uh, Crystal River's Convolvatron, which is a great name, right? The Convolvatron to actually create spatialized audio and record speech. And it was more than room size. It was actually a sound stage. It was multi-user, so multiple people in the system at the same time. Um, and what you would do is you would go into this world, you'd don the helmet, and move through different spaces. There was one space that was a hilltop. And it had the wind blowing by and these beautiful hoodoos and things like that. Um, there was another space that was a, a waterfall. And we had recorded spatial sound for the waterfall. The graphics was all rendered for it. Keep in mind, 1993 graphics. This was a, a reality engine, which uh, was incredibly expensive. Um, there was a, a, a third space that was a cave. And as you move through these spaces, you could transfer, translate, go through a portal, um, and link into the next space. You could grab and interact with things, act in the space you could embody as an avatar. So uh, if you were a spider, uh, you saw things in a certain color. If you were a snake, you saw red. If you were a crow, you could actually fly. So this is a picture of me, uh, 1993, what? I must have been three years old. Um, and and uh, uh, I was flying by flapping my wings. Right? And a lot of this actually came from user studies about how people might embody in these avatars. So you have avatars, you have spatial sound, you have room scale, you have uh, transitions from links from portals to different spaces. A lot of that sounds familiar, right? Um, but it was incredibly expensive. It was about a million dollars, at least. Um, and very few people actually got a chance to use it. So maybe a few hundred people who actually made it up to the Banff Center for the Arts actually got a chance to experience that. So it was fantastic. I'd argue there were a lot of things in there that were groundbreaking. Um, but it wasn't particularly democratic. So then the next year, I went to a party. Um, <laughs> it was at Mark Pesci's house uh, in February. I was talking with Mark this morning. He was claiming February 2nd was the first time he got it running. Um, and then he had a party. There was an SGI. Um, uh, some flavor of onyx, I'm sure. And it was running a uh, small vector square. Uh, and uh, I was at a place called Interval Research at the time. We had been trying to hire this intern, uh, Mark Andreas, and he didn't want to come to Interval. Instead, wanted to do this other project. Um, and what was amazing about this then is more people could see it. More people could use it. But it was still expensive. I mean. Uh, if you could afford to have a reality engine in your apartment, you were fairly well off or you had stolen it from somebody. Um, so fast forward to today. This is actually two weeks ago, so not exactly today. Um, 
and I'm sitting in front of uh, a system sub $2,000, uh, so no longer a million dollars for each eye with reality engines. Um, that's my son, he's nine years old, and in a couple of minutes he's building VR worlds. So where we had to use chewing gum and crazy compilers and all this other incredible stuff to just get the placeholder project working, um, he's able to do something in minutes. And uh, I mean, he's my son, I think he's bright, but I think that says a lot about the tools. And he was able to share it, and it was up on CodePen, right? So I like that framing because I think it's useful for us today to think about how we look at the future, right? Um, how many of you know about the sort of framing of the long now? Uh, a couple of people, right? So uh, the, the long now is this notion that you are in the moment, but that moment is actually as far back as it is forward. So if, and you can't really see that, but if that's 1993, 1994, then 2039 is the now, right? 23 years in the future. And so as a sort of participatory process, I asked a bunch of people, uh, I was tweeting with Mark Pesci, who couldn't make it, but I guess uh, Tony's gonna be the avatar, and, uh, and Vlad, uh, who worked on some of the original WebVR specs, and Martin, Diego, a number of different members of the team about questions and challenges that they would want if they were thinking about 2039. And so, very quickly, they were this set. One was, how do you enable VR experiences that are unique to the web? Now, uh, the reason I'm emphasizing this is, you know, if you go to IEEE VR, you go to Ismar, one of these things, there's lots of great work in VR. And there are people here from Oculus, from Samsung, from Google, all doing great work in VR. There are things that are specific and interesting on the web that are webby. And I hope as you do this, you think about that, right? So I was talking with Boris as we first got here. I told you I would use this. Um, and, and what was great is both how fast he was able to put it up and how it was a mashup. And the reason I want to bring this up is because when I've talked to people, there are lots of variations on a theme, right? VR embedded in VR worlds. AR embedded in VR worlds. Uh, AR embedded in AR worlds. Layers of AR worlds. And that means it's not just about how we know the, the uh, WebGL uh, frame and how the, the glasses are set up, but how we extend it to tracking. And as an example of this, this is a class I taught this last spring um, at Stanford. And we had students doing all sorts of creative explorations. It was really hard for them. Um, first, thank you to the HoloLens folks. You were great. We got some early HoloLenses, about six of them for the students to hack on. Um, and it, they, some of the students actually ended up doing VR projects, not AR projects. Some did AR projects. Some did spatial AR projects where they projected things. Some did hybrids. And to me, that was incredibly interesting. I talked to Blair McIntyre, uh, who I guess won't be joining, but he was going to join remotely. Um, and he's been working on the Argon browser. right? Um, and so there are a lot of extensions. And I know you want to focus on VR, but as you think about that 2039 extension, there will be lots of different ways in which these technologies are used. And, and they are transitional. They have changed a lot just from the last 23 years. Um, and so the last one is just, how do we use VR to make life better in the real world? And I know you all, if you're here, you probably care about that. You think about that, right? Um, and don't get me wrong, I played marathon a lot as a kid. I uh, love first person shooters, but there, there are a lot of ways in which things like this are enabled by VR systems. Uh, 360 video in this case, this is a Parkinson's patient. Um, and he's not able to actually leave where he lives. Um, and so it was very easy to quickly whip up something where he could travel to, to prom, Angor Wat, where he had always wanted to go, but he couldn't go before. Um, the same thing is true. I've been talking to some uh, pro professors over at Stanford who are doing more work on phobias. And the phobia work has been at IEEE VR for many, many years. But now they're actually talking about ways in which they can just very quickly change things, whip them up customize them on a moment-by-moment -moment web like basis have people use them in the home that that's a huge change for them so I told you I would try and keep it quick um, 
these are the, the things that when I talked to a number of different people who have been working in the web VR space, they cared about. The last one that came up for every single one of them was to move fast. Um, we get a free pass this first round, right? Um, enabling something new is great, but uh, I think there are NVIDIA people here. They want their chipsets to be used. The Intel people want graphics to be used. There are things that are going to move incredibly fast, and we have to move just as fast. I know that all of the browser manufacturers have people working day and night. I saw, well, uh, I saw Brandon come in. He's probably sleepless for a different reason. Congratulations. Um, uh, but we have to move fast. So uh, with that, uh, I just wanted to thank you again for letting me pose these questions and challenges to you. I look forward to all the incredible work that's happening today. And um, hopefully, if you get a chance, uh, come say hi. We're always looking. We'll be teaching that Stanford class again in the spring. And if you're in the area, we'd love to have people come and speak, talk about your work and the, the things that you're doing. So thank you very much.